Praise the Lord. Welcome to Yeshua's Blessings. My name is John. I'm grateful for you to be here again today for this wonderful day that we have. Serve the Lord Jesus Christ and to listen to his spirit speak to us today. Amen. We're in the midst of this series called Spiritual Men and we're getting on to the third part of it right now. The last couple of weeks we talked about the first week we talked about the positive, well, list how God created our spirit. Last week we talked about the world side to how it rejects His spirit. But this week we're go this week and next week we're going to talk about spiritual deafness and spiritual hearing, the importance of it, why why some why we do it do it at times where we don't hear but that yet there's times that we do hear it all boils down to our spirit being in tune with his spirit and being willing to accept it. but before we get into the message today let's go ahead and get going with the get the uh, formalities out of the way so to speak okay so let you know we're still on YouTube Facebook and Spotify you can catch us on all three spots on YouTube, we like we would like for you if you go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel, so you get and hit the notification bell, so when we drop a video, you'll be able to get it as well. Okay. Also, we encourage you to go to you our YouTube pick channel, it's because we also have another video that we do that's once a month. We're getting ready to drop one here in the next couple days on on the Red Yeshua's round table where we've been talking this year through evangelizing and watchmen we're still in the watchmen part of it and then before we get done with this this season so to speak we'll be talking about unity inside the church but right now last this this month we talked about just let you know the false watchmen we started we started talking about that we're probably gonna be doing that for a couple more months don't know whatever the Spirit of the Lord dictates that's what we go by and then also we like for you to if you want to help us in any way we all we do is ask if you share the videos so that other people can hear the message of the message of the Lord that they know that Jesus Christ loves them amen but we also encourage you if you haven't already to go to our Facebook channel Facebook group page and join us there to where you can get to us if you haven't already join us for the live Bible study that we do once a week with you know if time is permitted you know because you never know what's going to happen during the week if work or something happens okay we're also on Spotify okay Spotify we do that for the simple fact if you're traveling anywhere you want to listen to a message that just dropped or something like that you can go ahead and do that or you want to or you're staying up late and you're at work or something you have time you want to listen to the message go ahead that's the reason why we do that um one of the things is this year we also talk we're talking about doing another video we don't know when it's going to happen i'm just letting you know that right now but it's going to be more towards the torah than it is what we have right now but when we're talking about we're go going to be more towards the Torah we're going to be talking about Jesus in the Torah okay we want we want to talk about the Torah you know understand what the first what all is each section is but each section in the Torah speaks about Jesus Christ so we're going to focus the, around the prophecies Focus is about focus on the shadows of what is to come. As part of it, what as we see in some of the scenarios in like Joseph and Moses and Abraham and David, we see this similarity even with Joshua of the shadow of Jesus Christ. Okay. And what happened in their lives and stuff like that. All right. So that's one of the main reasons why we're going to be doing that. We don't, like I said, we don't know when it's going to happen. It could happen soon, but it can happen down the road. But sometime this year, we plan on doing that. We, when this happens, we will post a video 
a promo video and a bulletin inside the Facebook group page when it's about ready to happen. Okay, we'll, we'll have a little bit more idea of the time frame then. But that's one of the things we talked about this year. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get in the message for the day. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity to be able to come before you today to worship you and to praise you and to seek your face in everything that we do. Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to us and direct us into the path that you want us to go to. Hear the message that you desire for us to have to help us understand what you want from us. Let your will be done in our lives. And let your will be done in the message. Open our eyes and our ears, our minds and our heart to your Lord, to your word. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Like again, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, we're in the midst of this series called The Spiritual Man. We've been going over the last couple weeks of the how the introduction of it, to, to, try to explain, to expo, talk about how God created our spirit and what the most what, why it's important to have His spirit with us and helping us and what part of the about who we are as a spiritual man. Okay. Last week we talked about how the world rejects him and therefore because it rejects him it's going to reject us and that how man in itself and the flesh in itself and sin in the world rather be in the dark and not have the spirit of light, the spirit of truth reveal what they have done, what they, what they want to do. But this week we're going to talk about spiritual deafness. Spiritual deafness is one of those things that happens whether we realize it or not. Because a lot of times we try to listen to the Word of God, but it's because we're so numb to it, we, we, not, we do not recognize the Spirit of the Lord speaking to us, but we just, and we only hear this, the, the world speak to us. So only to hear that what, the, what Satan's using to drown out, because that's all we're used to hearing. That's all what we, what, what we know of hearing. Okay, and we're just, we're gonna go through each and every. We're gonna go through it kind of slow, but we'll try to get as much as we can done today because it is quite long. I'm just gonna let you know, and so that we make sure that we get everything that the Spirit of God wants us to know about this. Amen. So go with me today to Leviticus chapter 26. We're gonna start there, and. We need to understand the concept of what's going on here. Okay, Leviticus is the book, as we would call the book of law. Okay, where God Himself wrote His covenant with Moses and Israel, wrote the the commandments and of how to live our lives with, how to love the Lord your God with all your hearts, and how to love each other, and how to dwell, and how to live in Him. Okay. We're getting to the last. We're going into the last part of Leviticus, to where he's saying, "If you do not listen to my, if you do not heed what I said, if you do not follow what I said, these are the things that will happen." And in verse fourteen of Leviticus twenty-six is where we're going to start today. It says, "But if you do not obey me and do not observe all these commandments, and if you despise my statutes." Or if your soul abhors my judgment, so that you do not perform all my commandments, out, but break my commandments, I also will do this to you. I will even appoint terror over you, wasting disease and fever, which shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for the, for your enemies shall eat it. Now these are yeah. This is very terrible about what will happen but yet you have to look at don't just look at it as the fleshly side from the flesh side but looking into the spiritual side okay first and foremost we must, must remember we are spiritual beings yes we have a body we have a soul and we have a spirit we have this flesh this is the body we have the inner man which is the soul then we have the inner inner man which is the spirit which God created each and every one of us I have to an, an individual spirit that was created by him okay but because, remember what we talked about, because of the fall of man, our spiritual self has become darkened. Our spiritual self has become corrupt. 
okay? Because sin has entered into our lives. Sin has entered into the world, which is separate from, which separated us from God. And in order for our spiritual being to be cleansed, Jesus Christ had to, had to come to cleanse us from our spirit, from our disease, to cleanse us from our spiritual leprosy, which is sin. Okay. Because sin in itself corrodes us. Sin in itself blinds us. Sin in itself deafens us, deafens us and kills a sense inside of us to where we are not able to sense God. We cannot under hear God. We cannot see God and the things that are around us. Okay, because all we see is what the flesh wants us to see. All we hear is what the flesh wants us to hear. So therefore, when we're speaking about spiritual deafness and spiritual hearing and and spiritual blindness and spiritual seeing, it's not about what the flesh wants, but what the spirit is. Because we can see the things around us. We can see a car. We can see a house. We can see our husbands and wives. We can see our mothers and fathers, our brothers and sisters, our co-workers, our friends, our neighbors. We can see them. But because we're not used to the Spirit of God, because we're not used to the spiritual nature, because what do we, what do we read? For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Right? We also read read in Second Corinthians and in Ephesians how it is a spiritual warfare and not a fleshly warfare. Because we're not fighting our brothers and sisters. We're not fighting our mothers and fathers. We're not fighting our husbands, our our wives. We are fighting the spiritual nature behind it, which is causing us, which is causing us grief, which is causing us blindness, which is causing us deafness. Because a lot of times when, when what happens when we don't listen or see is due to hard-heartedness. What is hard-heartedness? It's a feeling. It's an emotion. To where pride gets in the way. Another thing that gets in the way is greed. We will see that was the rich man who asked Jesus, what must I do to be saved? And he told him, you must follow the Torah, you must do this, this, and this. He says, I, I have followed all this. And then just says, one thing you lack, you must sell everything. Give it all to the poor and follow me. And because of that, because of the greed in his eyes, because of the wealthiness that he had, the treasures on this earth, he did not want to give that up, and therefore he walked away sad. And that's what happens with us because we here in those here in our lifetimes, a lot of times we end up storing up this treasure on earth. And not the treasure that is in heaven. What did Jesus Christ say about that? He said, "Do not hold, do not store treasures up on this earth, but store treasure up in heaven. Because wherever your treasure is, therefore your heart is." Amen. So if we're storing up our treasures on earth, where is our heart? But if we're storing up our treasures in heaven, our heart is with God. So. It goes back to saying that it's either you're following God or you're following the world or you're following Satan. Because there's only one, there's only two roads here. You're either going to go the narrow or you're going to go the wide. Okay, The wide leads to hell, the narrow leads to heaven. There's no other way to put it. There's no other, there's no other road, there's no other way to heaven. Many people will say, oh, you could do this and that and the other thing, but there's only one way. That's through Jesus Christ. That is through Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen? Now, when we're talking about spiritual deafness, what is, the spiritual, what is the meaning of spiritual deafness? It's one who does not hear the words of God. So here we're talking about right here, what did it say? But if you do not obey me and do not observe all these commandments, obey. Obeying is part of listening. When we listen... If someone's truly listening, they will obey. If you, let's go with me to uh, Matthew chapter 21, if you will. Matthew 
Then there's many other examples that we can go to. We can look at Cain, for example, when, G when God told Cain, his countenance fallen, do not let sin, that sin was knocking on his door, do not let it take down his countenance from him because he was, because there was anger in his heart. He was letting his feelings run the show and not God let his connection with God run the show. So he let, what had happened, he let his pride interfere. Because what happened? Abel, God accept Abel's sacrifice but rejected Cain so Cain got upset Cain, I can't say upset he got furious he got angry with his brother for him having the better sacrifice than him and what did he do he, he killed his brother that's what happens with a lot of us and we'll go a little bit more into the things that we talk about even more in, in certain stories and certain scenarios in the Bible that we see through the, through the lives that we see in the Bible because we know it's all true because this all happened okay believe it or not this is our history Bible okay this is our history book of what happened to people who do who listened and who did not listen who obeyed and who did not obey okay these who are who were with God and who were not of God Okay, we see it. We see both sides, and those who were with God, He blessed, and those who were not with God ended up being cursed. Amen. So, the, as we're in Matthew chapter twenty-one, go with me to verse twenty-eight. Now, read it. I'm reading out of the New King James again. Just to let you know. So, it says, so verse twenty-eight. It says, "But what do you think? A man had two sons." And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second son, second, and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of, the, of his father? He said to him, the first. Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believe him. When you saw it, you did not afterwards relent and believe him. So, what he's talking about here, one son heard the word of the father. Even though he did not want to do it, even though he said he was not going to do it, he still ended up doing it. But then the one son heard the father and said, I will do it. But did not. How many times do we we can see it countless times, even in in the Torah, in the first five books, in the Exodus and Leviticus, when the when the uh, Israelites were at the foot of the mountain said, "Oh, we will do this," but what happened? They still turned their back on God, turned a deaf ear to the Lord. All right, because they chose not to listen. They chose to whine. They chose to go their own route and follow the ways of the world and the and the neighbors around them. First of all, we could see that when Joshua took them across the land, how there was times where they made a pact, a peace treaty, or whatnot, with the in, the people who lived in Canaan, even though God told them to what get rid of them. He he wanted them to he wanted him them to conquer. He wanted them to get rid of the people who were in Israel, so that all they all that was in there was his children. Okay, so they can inherit the land without what problems. But we see that through a lot of a lot of our lives, where when we go through life, we tend to do it want to do it our way. When we tend to do what our own way, we're turning a deaf ear to the words of God, to where someone who is disobedient, sinful, practice with God, does not observe the God's commitment, someone who do not heed God's voice. So therefore, what did he say then? He even warned them, if you, re if you remember reading it, if you do not listen, this is what's going to happen. He did not heed, they did not heed the warning God gave them. So my question for you, are you heeding his warnings in your life? Are you paying attention in your life to what's going on in your life of what is happening? 
there's a lot of things in our lives that happen in our that the Satan throws. Okay, he will throw things, so it distracts us to where we do not hear the message of God. To where all we hear, we hear words coming from our spouses or our job or our co-workers or our friends and family members but we're not listening to what God is trying to say so we, we're letting our emotions and our feelings push it aside okay if you go with me to Psalm 58 verse 4 it shows another il good illustration of what it's like turning a deaf ear to God. Okay. Psalms 58. Psalm 58. It says, start with verse 3. It said, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. So, what did we talk about before? How when we first come into this world, we're born into sin. We, we wander away. So therefore, the Spirit of God has to reach out to us and to draw us back into Him. And we, and there's a lot of times in our lives, you know, a for, fortunately some of us hear it right away, but there are some of us who do not hear it right away. So it takes a little longer. And there's some out there who haven't heard it yet. God is reaching out to them. God is calling them. But they refuse to accept him. They refuse to hear his words. They refuse to heed God's voice. Okay? So, again, verse 3, again, let's start again. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf cobra that stops its ears, which will not heed the voice of charmers, charming ever so skillfully. Now we all know about these snake charmers, okay, so to speak. They think they're charming these cobras with these whistles and flutes, but technically you can't do that. They're not charming the cobra. The cobra is just memorized by what's going on. But the thing is, he does not listen to that. All it takes, what, is this, what does that cobra do? Strikes. Strikes that movement. Okay, so what's going on with us is, what's going on here is talking about those who are, list, those who are like the cobra, those who are like the deaf adder, they hear, but they choose not to listen. They refuse to open their ears to the truth. And it can happen at any given time. It can happen to any one of us at any given time as long if we're not in the will of the Father. We're not fall, if we're not walking in the Spirit, but walking in the flesh. If we're walking in this world, we're more at to, to listen to the things of this world and not the things of God. But if, as long as we are walking in the Spirit and staying close to the Spirit of God, what happens? We're more, we more, we are more willing and more capable of hearing. God's words. It's just like what we talk about oh, the pathological liar. A pathological liar is one of those who speaks to lie. So used to speaking lie that they don't know what the truth is anyways. And we see that also how Jesus told the, the, really, the Pharisees of his time. He said, look, you're just like your father the devil. He was a liar in the beginning. He's a liar still. So he's calling them liars. He was also calling them murderers and thieves because he said, you're like your father, the devil. But Satan is a murderer. He is a liar. What does the Bible say in John 10 and 10? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So, those who follow him, those who hear his words over God's words and follow him are no different than him. But those who are children of the Lord and those who follow after the Lord and heeds his voice, they are all about what? Life. Giving life. Speaking hope. Speaking love. Speaking joy. Speaking peace to those around them. Yes, we get caught up in things sometimes. 
but most importantly we have that hope in Jesus Christ that we are saved now as we follow Jesus Christ as we follow the Spirit of God obedience comes along with it what do we talk about our actions speak louder than our words we can say we are followers of Christ, but unless we are following him and actually doing it, it doesn't matter. Saying one thing and doing another is totally opposite of what we are told to do. If that's the reason why we have in first John four, nineteen through twenty one, where John talks about if you love your brother if you hate your brother but you say you love God, you're a liar. Because how can you love God who you cannot see but hate your brother who you do who you can see love because the love then love is not inside you because therefore then therefore you are a liar you're not heeding God's words so that's one of the reasons why we talk about the deaf cobra is they stop at the ears they don't want to hear what is truth they don't want to hear what is right all they wanted because they're so angry they're so prideful. They have so much greed. There's so, so much indignation inside of them that they don't want to hear the truth. All they want to do is strike. They want their revenge. Emotion and feelings are a number one giver of the reason why people do not want to listen to the will words of God. If you go through the world today and you talk about some of these people who are in the world today, they said, they say, what, then why does God allow this? Why does God allow this? This happened to me, so I will not believe and stuff like that. So it's all, so basically it's a lot about the emotions that are, that are inside of them that has been built up that Satan has been using to put that wall and put that stopper in their ears to where they do not hear the words of God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 19. We see this with Lot's wife. Because she was so caught up with what she had in Sodom, she didn't heed God's warning. Like, heed the warning. Okay. Says, so, start with the verse. So we know the whole story about Sodom and Gomorrah, about Lot's family and wife. How the two angels of the Lord came to Sodom and Lot gave him asylum. We opened up his door, and the people of Sodom wanted to wanted to sleep with them and Lot wouldn't allow it and because of all that the angels blinded the, the men of Sodom then they then he drags Lot out and said we're going to destroy the series but do not look behind just go to the mountains do not stop here or stop there flee to the mountains what happens this is what it says in verse 17 so it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said escape for your life do not look behind you, or, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. So as they all going, they had to flee. The, these are the words, okay? They were warned. But did they heed? No. Lot's wife did not. What happened? It says, so verse 25 so he overthrew the cities on the plains all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground but his wife looked back behind it and she became a pillar of salt when we look into the past when we can't hold we can't let go what's holding us back from the blessings of God it's as if we're dead already because death has a hold of us sin has a hold of us and the wages of sin is death so we cannot hold on to this world and chase after God we must let it go we get caught up in looking behind us and looking caught up with our regrets and our emotions and, and our treasures that we have but God says that's all for night that's all passing away. I last forever, so grab a hold of me. Grab a hold of what I have for you so that you can have life. Listen to my words. One of the words that he speaks 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So therefore we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We seek him out. We hold on to him. We, he is our treasure. That is the treasure that we're supposed to have. But too many people want to hold on to the treasures of this world. This is like this is like this. This guy has runs into this this guy who's run who's a poor man. Okay. Goes on down into this cave. He sees all these treasures. And he was told and he wants to take as much as he wants. So he's filling his pockets. He's filling his pockets. And he's holding on to it. And he's trying to get as much as he wants. And he's trying to climb back out, but he can't get out because the the hole is narrow. Towards the top, it's the only thing that could fit is his body. But because he doesn't want to hold on to the riches, what happens? He dies. He gets buried with the treasures. Are you going to allow the treasures of this world to keep you from the promises of God? Are you going to continue listening to this world to where you do not hear the promises of God? Another example that we can look after is Pharaoh. There is, I looked into this, okay? It says three times Yahweh declared that he will harden Pharaoh's heart. Three times. You see that in Exodus 4.21, 7.3, and 14.4. Six times Yahweh actually hardens Pharaoh's heart. Okay? Just hear me out here. Exodus 9.12, 10.1, 10.20, 10.27, 11.10, and 14.8. Okay? Seven times the hardening is expressed as a divine pa passive with Yahweh as the implied subject, i.e. Pharaoh's heart was hardened by Yahweh. Exodus 7.13, 7.14, 7.22, 8.19, 9.7, 9.35, and 14.5. And three times we are told that Pharaoh hardened his own heart. Exodus 8.15, 8.32, and 9.34. Because he kept hardening his heart, what happened? Egypt was destroyed. He lost his child. He lost his own life. Because he would not heed God's warning. How many times were the Israelites thrown into captivity or allowed someone to rule over them because they would not heed God's warning? He, there's many times where he sent prophets and judges out to them to warn them what was going on but they did not want to listen they wanted to follow at their own hearts which is one thing that we're not supposed to do not and not follow after God's word if God's word is in your heart then you're following after God's word but if the world is in your heart you're following after world we are never following our own desire because we are dependent we're not independent we depend we depend on who is leading us. Okay. Okay. That's one thing we must understand. We only depend on who is leading us. And if we're depending on who is leading us, we're only listening who is leading us. Who we allow leading us. If you're following at this world, you know, you're depending on this world, so you're listening to the things of this world. If you're depending on God and the God is leading you, guess what? You're listening to God's word. And there's times, if you look even in, in with Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, it talks about how he, told, he tells Eli, Elijah to listen. He had a raging fire and an earthquake and all these things, but God was not in those. Then all of a sudden he hears a small, small whisper, and God was there. God's not always going to speak loud to you. He can just be the quiet, small, still voice in your head just saying, Listen, stop. You do not need to be doing this. Follow me. But many of us, we, we want to continue doing our own ways. We, we think we want to put that off because that's just a small voice. 
as a small still voice and we continue to listen to the abruptness of what this world is wanting us to do so therefore we follow after him spiritual deafness spiritual deafness is those who do not heed the words of God who do not listen we, you, remember what I said you can read this Bible read this Bible front to back over and over again but if you're not listening to the Spirit of God trying to teach you and speak to you through the Word of God, you're not going to hear it. You're not going to hear God's love. I remember talking to a bunch of people who've talked about how, it, and you see this through the news today and the world today with a lot of people who say, that. well, I read cover to cover, but all I've seen is what? Controversy. Contradiction. But God don't contradict himself. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. So therefore, if he never changes, his word never changes. So therefore, if we're not listening to God and obeying God, then how are we are how are we going to be able to receive his blessings? Yes, God has already blessed us. God has already blessed each and every person with eternal life. Listen to me when I say this. What is that? What is John 3.16? It is a blessing. But in order for us to receive that blessing, we must first what? Believe. A lot of people do not, want, do not believe in Jesus Christ, so therefore they do not receive the gift of eternal life. So the blessing is already out there. Abraham, God blessed Abraham, right God said I have blessed you and your family and your descendants this is what I need you to do but what if Abraham chose not to do that would he have, would he have received the promised land no what if he chose to stay in earth what if he chose to stay where he was at because he did not want to walk across the land did not want to do all that then he would not have the promised land he would, not have had the, he would not have been able to receive the blessing. So yes, listening God, believing in God, and listening God, we must also obey God and what he wants us to do. God wants us to follow him. Are you going to follow him? He tells the Israelites in Leviticus 19, Be holy because I am holy. In other words, Take after me. Do as, do as I do. Don't do as what the world does because the world is just going to lead you astray and keep you keep you away from the promise that I've already given you. But yet you, don't, you, you do not want to receive it because you're so caught up in the world today. You're, caught, you're so caught up in what's around you because you want riches from this world and not the riches, the riches from God. Go with me to Romans chapter 11. Let's start with verse 6. This is the one of the things that we must be willing to listen to. And and if you're listening to the Word of God and allowing the Spirit of God to, to move into your lives and letting Him teach you, you too will be able to hear God speak to you through His Word. One of the things that He says over and over and over again in His Word is, I love you. I love you. I love you. How many times does a parent tell his children that they love them? We should be telling our children that we love them over and over again. How many times does a husband tell his, tell his wife, I love you? We should be doing that over and over again. Because God tells us every single day, every single second, I love you. You want to know how much I love you? I gave up everything. I gave my life up for you. Amen? 
says, But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. What then? Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened. As it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that will not see, and ears that will not hear, down to this very day. And David said, Let their tail become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block, a re retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened, so that they cannot see and bend their backs forever. Okay. The quotations that they get, that they have here is, and you can also go look this up. I'm just going to give you a bunch of scriptures, and I'll put them down in the description for you. So you have them. You can go to Isaiah 29.10, Deuteronomy 29.4. Isaiah 43, 8, Jeremiah 5, 21, Ezekiel 12, 2, Ephesians 4, 18. You can also go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 14. So I'm just I'm telling you that these scripture verses is but to let you know where you can find all this stuff talking about not listening. These are the, we're going to be talking about the ears and the eyes. Why do you think when we open up with prayer, we talk about opening our eyes and our ears, our minds and our hearts to your word, to your spirit, so that we hear the message of God, so that we hear his words, his voice, and we don't listen to the things around us. That's the reason why there's a lot of times, I believe, that phones shouldn't be inside the church, because too many people are looking at their phones and not listening to the message. What do we used to take to the church? The Bible. We read the word there. We listen to the preacher. We listen to the message. So therefore, we will know we will know whether the preacher is speaking truth or false. Because then we're paying attention to the word of God. Allowing the Spirit to tell us what He wants us to know, to teach us. That's the reason why it's called He is called the Spirit of truth but we talked but we read in Romans 16 13 and I mean, not 16 not Romans John 16 13 14 17 14 26 the spirit of truth the helper the comforter he comforts us to let us know when things are going bad he's there to comfort us he's a helper to help us remember what he has said the spirit of truth is to reveal all truth to us what is truth Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. The Spirit of truth teaches us and reminds us that Jesus said He is the way, and that He is the way. He is the only way. He is the only truth. He is the only life. The only way we can ex experience life is through Him. How much longer are we going to sit here and pretend that we hear things but in all actuality ignore what God is saying I've had to put that check in my life too as well because there's a lot of times where I just continue to allow my feelings and allow the things of this world to drown out the things of God but then God tells me, tells me wake up John he's saying to you as well wake up Matthew wake up Jacob, wake up, Isaiah, whoever is listening to you. He's saying, wake up. Listen to what I am saying, because my words have healing. My words have love. My words have peace. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What is it? But what is the first verse says? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He, if, he, if you allow the Lord to lead you, He will lead you by in peace and not in turmoil. Yes, we may go through things in our lives that may, in normal reality, throw someone into panic. The Lord is with us and His everlasting peace is with us. 
That's what he's talking about when he's talking about, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. How many of the apostles went through that valley? What was it? Martyr. Be persecuted, hunted down, thrown into prisons. We see this across the world today with in countries where Christianity is not welcomed and people are being executed for believing in Jesus Christ. But yet they still have peace in their hearts and they still have joy because they have the everlasting peace within them. Who is that? Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, dwelling inside of them and they're following after him and listening to his words that he is that he will never leave them nor forsake them there may be times in your life that you may it may seem like it because satan has thrown that confusion inside you but god is not the author of confusion satan is the only one in your life that will ever bring peace to you as God, as Jesus Christ, as the Holy Spirit. Yes, there is times, I will agree, there is times where like that commercial, the VA commercial, should have listened to me, should have listened to me, smack you on the head. Because there's times where we need to be a paddle on the butt because we don't want to, we, we are stubborn. Humans are stubborn. We pee. Us, we're stubborn beings because we, we're so used to what we're used to and we don't want to take something different. So therefore we stay to what is in the norm, what is normal to us. But what is normal to us is not helping us. It's not healing us. Jesus Christ is the only one that heals us. His blood is the only one that purifies our spirit. Remember what I talked about? The water, when you go take a shower, what happens? We put a water on our body, or soap on the body to wash our skin. We have to do that every single day, right? But with Jesus Christ's blood, he washed with the blood of Jesus Christ, washed our spirit, washed that sin away, washed that filth away. It only needs to be applied once. That's the difference. Water, he has to repeat it blood. You only need it once. Amen. Let's go. I will stop there for today. We'll determine whether we're going to continue with the spiritual death or so we'll go on to spiritual hearing which is well, which, which we'll go to through scenarios of where people listen to the word of God and we're blessed. Well, we talked about a couple already with Abraham and with uh, Elijah but here's the thing are you listening are you hearing the words of God or are you continuing to turn a deaf ear to him that's a question I even have to ask myself that every once in a while. I have to ask that every day some days. Because it's vital that we listen to the Spirit of God. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity where we are able where we were able to come together today. To worship you and to praise you by listening to your words and reading your word. Letting your spirit tell us what you wanted us to know. I pray that the ears of each and every person here will open up and to listen to your words, Lord. Will they stop allowing their feelings and the things of this world drown you out and be opened in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for those people around the world right now that are going through difficulties. I pray that you will bless them. I pray that you will keep them. I pray that you will strengthen them and give them the courage to continue today in your word. I pray that they will be a light to those around them. That the, those around them will seek after you and want you in their lives. I 
thank you, Lord, for each and every person that's watching right now. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. I want to again thank you, you all, for joining me tonight as we continue on this series of spiritual men. I know there's a lot of information that we go through in each and every Bible study. But we want you to understand that we love you. God loves you. And we want you to know what the Lord says. We want you to be equipped. We want you to be ready. Because God wants us ready. Because things are changing in this world each and every day. But the only thing that remains the same is Jesus Christ. And He is the one who we come to go to to worship, to praise, and to rely on and to follow. For He is our Good Shepherd. He is the Great Shepherd. <coughs> Amen. Remember, go to our YouTube page. Subscribe to it. Join us there. With that being said, God bless you, God loves you, and so do I.